long-awaited house plant tour. I just want to say my house is currently a mess because I'm doing my plant room makeover, which that video will be out next week. It's not an ideal time to film a house plant tour, but I really wanted to get this out there for a long time. So I'm just going to go through right now, record all my plants, and then give you a really amazing house plant tour the next time I do it. But I really wanted to start this off with a bang and show you my Monstera Thai constellation. So someone in Brooklyn, New York was actually selling this tie and I went to go pick it up myself. I actually have some clips of when I went to go get it. I'll probably release that at a later date, but oh gosh, I'm just so happy with it. It did have a scale issue when I first got it, but for the most part, that seems gone. There's also a, um, there are also bonite systemic granules in the soil, so anything left would or should be killed off. So because of that process, there was a few leaves that had to get cut off, but it actually has finally grown a leaf. And I think it's been like a month or two. It's been quite a while. So right now I have these aspect lights above it. Um, I wish I had spread them out more, but I guess it is what it is and I can rearrange that later. And it definitely seems to like them. Although I'm not impressed with these aspect lights and they are the large size too as I was hoping to be because the plant still seems to be lacking light. At least it does have a window over here but wish it did have something more. So there's my giant tie <laughs> and yeah I'm essentially just really really lucky to even have this plant in my house. It's just absolutely stunning. And over in this corner we have my large gloriosum. So I think this was the original leaf to the plant and yeah, but it has grown a few. It's not the ideal spot for it and I've had some yellowing on the foliage. It did have some pest issues, but I think I've got rid of that now. But I'm definitely planning to repot it into something just different. I think it just might be, even though there's a significant amount of perlite in there, I feel like it just still stays too moist or something. It's just not ideal. If you follow Variegated Velvet on Instagram, she has her crawling philodendrons in actually a Delta 10 and Delta 20 La Chusa pot. So I think I'm gonna do that because they seem to go really well in there. Like, oh my gosh. How gorgeous is that leaf? I just don't want it to lose its coloration. So I think potting it up in something better would be more ideal for this plant. So beautiful. Okay, so first we'll start on this wall where I have just a mixture of different plants. So actually over here, we have my Anthurium clarinervium and she is so stinking pretty and does not stop blooming. <laughs> I actually bought this one because it had more leaves on it than my other clarinervium did but the only thing is when it shipped to me it had a lot of moisture retention in the leaves and it got a lot of bacterial issues so i had to actually remove a lot of the foliage unfortunately but they are still much larger leaves than my other clarinervium so i am really happy with that also here is my other clarinervium as you can see she is in bloom as well and she is very happy what I love about these is the veining. They're just absolutely gorgeous. There's something about a clarinervium and the very distinctive veins they have that just make them completely stunning. And the fact that they're absolutely <laughs> very heart-shaped is just another added plus. Like, we all love those heart-shaped leaves, but these guys are definitely the cutest when it comes to those. So this is my Anthurium Crystal Hope which has incredible silver veining. This is its brand new leaf over here. Up here is my Circestus mirabilis, or mirabilis, and this is actually Chris's plant. I just take care of it, <laughs> but I really love it. It's been growing slowly, but growing. So it's given me, I think, two or three new leaves since I've gotten it but it's absolutely stunning. This is like one plant that I prefer to uh, keep in its immature form. I think the mature ones are nice, but 
there's so there's like come on the veining on this one is just everything like why would you want to lose that and over here is one of my variegated monsteras it's actually my first one i'm actually air laying her so i can propagate her this is one that's just been an okay grower for me my other variegated monsteras have grown much better than this one has like she's gorgeous and everything but um I definitely think this is probably one that I'm not going to end up keeping. I mean, she's cute, but <laughs> the genetics of my other ones are just everything. And here's my Anthurium Metallicum, which honestly hasn't done much for me. He keeps floating toward this grow light, which is a mistake. But this is one that he's kind of gangly, even though he has a lot of lights, and I don't really know what's going on with him. So not the biggest fan of this guy, unfortunately. Up here, we have my beautiful Queen Anthurium. You actually haven't seen this particular one before. This I haven't, I don't think I've named her yet. I've just been calling her Big Mama, so. <laughs> but she has grown this new leaf in my care, which is absolutely gorgeous and i can't wait till she grows more i actually thought she was growing another leaf like over here but it turns out it's actually an inflorescence which i'm also happy about because i have another queen with an inflorescence and i'm hoping to actually pollinate them to have more queen babies <laughs> and right next to her is my anthurium crystallinum which i actually have in this kind of moss basket i didn't make this i bought this on the super moss website but i really love it and it looks really cool let me see if i can actually turn her like <laughs> definitely gonna have to get a ladder but <laughs> for now she's really beautiful and down here is my other queen that is actually having an inflorescence. And this is the green form. So the other one was more of a dark form. So I'm hoping to actually pollinate them with each other. And here is the newest leaf on her. Very, very stunning. There's something about a nice green form that is really gorgeous. But then like in reality, like who doesn't want a nice green? gorgeous dark form like it's just everything and on this shelf over here sorry i'm trying to like navigate this plant world i keep rubbing up against this inflow which it was it sticky oh dang it's sticky <laughs> great now my shirt is gross i'm just gonna turn this plant i thought it was done with its sticky stage so I wasn't trying to avoid it like I was before and it's not, it's just, it's gross. So that's one thing, don't rub against the inflows <laughs> because the inflorescences are gonna be goopy. So on the first shelf over here, yeah, I know that looks sad and I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> so the two end plants over here are actually Anthurium Warquianum Waterburyanum hybrids. And if you notice they're in these pots here, which they weren't before, so what I did was, <laughs> which you would think would be okay, is I repotted them during the summertime because they were getting pretty pot bound. They were in smaller pots and obviously I just wanted to upgrade them and they freaked out. Both of them did. It was super annoying because they were super happy and super healthy. So having that happen was quite discouraging. But if you see the leaves, they're like, they're all jacked up all of them like all four this one had messed up <laughs> the newer leaf it has right here is wonderful and perfectly fine like look how beautiful that is i almost sold these because i got so upset but i knew they would freak out again so what's the point um i do really love them though they are beautiful hybrids but super super temperamental i've never had any other in theory be this temperamental and the fact that i did them both at the same time and they weren't the only plants to be repotted just the only ones that like freaked out is just telling of the nature of this particular hybrid this one fared a little better so she's actually grown, I think, two new leaves since she's been repotted. Let me see if I can find one that got messed up. 
So this is one that did get messed up. I know it's harder to tell because she's a bit bigger, a bit darker. Yeah, this is one that was pretty bad. This is one of her newer leaves right here. But yeah, other than the repotting, they've been perfect little angels. <laughs> just don't ever repot them. Like I don't ever want to repot them again because I just don't want to lose all my leaves again. But I guess that's just kind of life. <laughs> Over here we have Lux, which is an Ethereum hybrid that I own. And I will just insert a picture here of how root bound he was. So the previous pot he was in, he was just kind of sitting in. I didn't know this at the time, but there was like a plastic interior. So every time I water him, if any water, like no water could escape. So he was kind of sitting in it. So he ended up absorbing a ton of water into his leaves. Like these leaves, were incredibly, incredibly beautiful and stunning. I mean, they still are, but they're dying off, which is really unfortunate. So I'll show you a picture of him in his kind of prime. And this is him kind of now, which is a sadder state, unfortunately. Like you can just tell how much the chlorophyll has gone from his leaves. And you can see it's just, that's just kind of it for that one. Luckily enough though, I did end up pollinating him, which I will be making a video about how to pollinate your anthurium, but he's perfectly fine. It's a healthy inflorescence, growing little seedlings. So down here is a really exciting shelf. So if you remember from my birthday video, Chris got me this anthurium luxuriance right here. Well, he also ended up getting me some months later, these three anthurium luxuriance here. And my goal for these guys is to actually get seedlings out of them to make them a bit more accessible to people because they were extremely difficult for me to come across and find. And I'm very grateful that Chris got these for me. They're absolutely beautiful. And these three right here are all brand new leaves. As you can see, they're super beautiful, super bullet, like absolutely like one of my favorite plants overall. I just <laughs> definitely would never, ever, I, I can't even see myself getting rid of these, even though I have like four of them. I find it extremely difficult, like the decision to ever like rid myself of any if I wanted to, because I'm just so, so in love with all of these. They're just so beautiful. And I love how they just kind of harden off to this bluish green color. Like it's absolutely stunning. Love it. And these two are in the process of hardening, so they'll eventually get a bit darker. As you can tell, like their older foliage back here, significantly darker. And then next to them, I have my, God, this one's so dark, it's so hard to see. <laughs> so this is Anthurium Black Magic, and it is a Javanini hybrid. So this is Anthurium Luxurians, hybridized with Dresslary. And if you can tell over here, so these are the two leaves I got it with, which are significantly lighter in color, but that's because his greenhouse has like absorbently high amount of foot candles. I think it's like 1500. So compared to like my conditions here where they're probably getting around maybe 300 foot candles, it's a significantly darker area. And this is really what you want from your Ethereum Black Magic. This is kind of why people want it, like this dark, beautiful color. Let's see if I can get a good angle on that. Like she's absolutely gorgeous. I am so excited. And she's finally producing another leaf for me, which is really awesome. So I was super worried because when I first got her, she actually had some root rot and I ended up repotting her into a mostly perlite mix and in terracotta. And she pushed out this leaf after that, which is really awesome. So back here is another plant that I actually received with some root rot. It's an unknown Ethereum hybrid that I suspect probably has some luxuriance in it. Like these guys kind of complement each other not fully obviously the same they are definitely have di they definitely have different parentage in them but oh gosh it is absolutely beautiful and it has those red square luxuriant petioles 
It's really beautiful. But I will be kind of doing a series where it's kind of a you help me identify this plant <laughs> video, which um, it's much more intricate than that. And I talk about a lot of characteristics of different plants and things like that a week. And I kind of spitball like what I think it could be. And then I think it'd be fun if we just kind of discussed it in the comments section. So that's kind of like a future thing. There's a few plants that I thought would be fun to do with. And right over here, one of my prized jewels. So I just want to talk about this one really quickly. I like how I say that, but I'm talking about all these plants. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> so it had these three leaves and it was a cutting. So I rooted it, I think in like February, I got it. So it rooted for a few months and then it's produced a bunch of leaves since then. So I've gotten one, two, three, four, five leaves since it rooted. So that's pretty awesome. So it's at least shooting out one a month. So to me, this is a really, really fast grower. And it has wonderful genetics. Just look at that leaf. <laughs> I'm super, super in love with this plant. And what's really exciting, um, I have it on this pole. I never ever wet it, but even so, um, it definitely attached itself to it. And it definitely registers that it's climbing because it has actually produced secondary fenestrations, which is awesome. So I first noticed it on this leaf here. You can tell right there is a secondary fenestration. And then the one after that came out so much bigger and it has a quite a few of them. So I'm really excited about that. And the reason this one is actually greener than this leaf here is because this plant, just the way it's like genetically in its stem here, it'll produce a leaf that has more green, more white, more green. So it just goes back and forth. And it's absolutely stunning. The variegation, I would say, definitely even has improved on this plant since it's gotten older. And I'm really, really excited to where to see like what this one becomes like in the next year. Like it's gonna be insane. Just absolutely. Look at that nice minty color. <laughs> so I absolutely love this plant. Um, she started growing this way because I have her facing a light over here. Yeah, normally she's like that. So it's kind of annoying that it's bare on this side, but that's kind of my fault because I want my plants to face me when obviously they're gonna turn around and just face the light. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, that's a thing that happens a lot with me. Like you'll notice that in this room. <laughs> over here is another um, variegated monsteria. Monsteria, what am I talking about? Monstera that I received as a cutting. So this was, I think it was like four or five leaves. I think four. And then I cut it into two because I didn't think it was going to root as well with a, that many leaves. So you don't want to stress the plant that much. So one side grows bigger leaves like this. And the other side, well, they're almost the same size now, <laughs> grows these smaller leaves. But it's absolutely gorgeous the variegation on this one has a ton more white so it was definitely more of a risk to have this plant obviously because there's always that worry of it reverting to white and you really don't want your plant to be all white or have a majority of white because it's just going to get browning so yes while i do have browning on this leaf right there it is not anything to do with light or water it is simply a pest issue that i had so ignore that <laughs> but honestly i give it so much light it has like a mars hydro light above it and honestly i found that is the key to avoid any kind of browning on your monsteras i think the one lesson i really learned and i will go over a few plants actually right now is how much philodendrons and monsteras absolutely will just thank you if you give them more light so right over here i have my philodendron el chaco red and as you can see it put out this big leaf here and then it put out a bunch of smaller leaves and then i gave it more light and it threw out this gigantic red leaf <laughs> And I'm like, okay, obviously light makes a huge difference. And I'm gonna show you one other plant that this happened with. So I believe this is now called a philodendron rosio catafillum, but what happened was it produced 
this nice leaf right here. And then it gave me this janky small leaf here. So I ended up putting it under this grow light and it's produced such a big leaf. Like you can't even tell how big this is, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm super, super impressed with it. And then this makes me definitely realize that lighting is just so key to them. Like, I feel like a lot of us think that plants should grow based on what is convenient to us. But if you really want them to flourish, you really have to give them just optimal conditions. Then over here we have my Syngonium pedophyllum, and it's the variegated form. And it is by far one of my favorite plants. And Chris will tell you this too. He absolutely adores this plant. He wants one of his own. It is just a gorgeous plant. Like you really can't, like how much, how pretty is that? I don't know. But ever since I put it on this pole, it's gotten so much bigger, like all, like instantaneously. It was getting these really tiny leaves and right away it was just like, bang, here's a giant leaf. And then it's just getting bigger and bigger. And I can't wait till it produces these really large floppy ears. And I'm super excited to kind of just show you the progress of how much this one's just probably going to change in the next year. I don't think I got a good shot of my Chaco. Just so red. Not going to be too touchy with this one because he had a case of spider mites, so I don't want to mess with anything. <laughs> but you can definitely see that damage. Like all that. Poor thing. And over here is my variegated bilotai. I love this plant so much. Absolutely gorgeous variegation. Like I really couldn't ask for a better specimen of this plant. And if you notice here, I did take a top cutting off of it. So when I put it on this pole, after a little while, the internal spacing finally got bigger, like it registered, it was on this pole. <laughs> And I decided finally to take a cutting because I was too scared to take a cutting with this really, really short like internodal spacing down here. Like personally, that is way too frightening. Like no way. But look how much it increased. Like that's a lot, definitely a lot. But it has produced me three new shoots, which I am thrilled about. Like three specimens of variegated villati growing out of this one. That's gonna be something to see. And over here, we have the top cutting. So he's looking a little sad. I had him air layering, but he didn't have it, obviously have a really advanced root system. But he has started already getting used to the soil. So he's definitely grown roots since being in here. I was getting a little worried because of him just being so floppy, but I just know he's not able to uptake as much water right now. But that root makes me feel so much more confident. <laughs> Definitely feel way more comfortable about just leaving him in the soil. A lot of times I like to water propagate, so this felt really risky for me, especially with the variegated bilati, but I did air layer him, so I felt like it should have been completely fine. Such a pretty leaf. Down here we have my Monsteris dendeliana, and this is um, the Alba variegated form. So it actually <laughs> put out a runner a long time ago, and it found its place over here on this Syngonia moss bowl, where it finally started shooting out leaves again. So yeah, that happened. I don't know if I'm gonna. I probably will put, end up putting him on a pole eventually. I honestly just haven't felt like it. <laughs> like I've been putting a lot of plants on poles, but. I don't know. I feel like he's small enough that I don't care enough to do it at the moment. But yeah, eventually. <laughs> so over here, I have my Anthurium doriaki, and it needs more light. It looks like it has a light and a lot of light in this camera, but it does not. Um, unfortunately, with these little square cabinets, well, they're wonderful. They don't give enough light like they hide way too much with this so i don't really know what i'm gonna do here i don't know if i'm just gonna put a light like in there with them like behind this cabinet or what because it seems like no matter where i put a light 
in this room, they just can't get it. Like they need to be in front of a window or something, which I'm not gonna do with this cabinet. Right next to it is my Anthurium Bonflandii Variegata. I'm not 100% on the ID, that's just what it was sold to me as, but it's completely stunning. Definitely a favorite of mine. Like just those pink veins are absolutely gorgeous. And I just, I melt. It's so beautiful. Like. Look at all that pink in there. I just think it's so cool when our plant produces pink because it's just so odd and you don't expect it, but really neat. My begonia pavonina. I actually had her in very bright light and she lost a lot of blue, but now it looks like she's starting to regain it. She's really beautiful. She's actually flowered a lot right over here. So she's one that actually benefits from being in this darker area. And over here, my next cabinet. So up here is just my billet high. Let's see if I can get a good. Honestly, I think he thinks he's like a faux spiritus because he's got that spiritus vibe going on. I'm sorry it's so dark. It's been a rainy and dreary day out. So not a lot of lighting right now. <laughs> I'll probably come back and just do a video clip of him. But over here, my pride. <laughs> <laughs> this is Elvira, and she is an unknown, like, hybrid anthurium, and yeah, so she actually has produced a pup, which the person who sold it to me will be getting that pup, because I know it was difficult for her to sell this plant, so I just want to be able to give her part of it back, but look in there, it's just like a hot mess of, like, they're too clustered together. Like I need to do it soon, but they're both growing. Like there's two new leaves on both sides. It has an inflorescence, <laughs> but it's just way too tight in there. And they're actually kind of jamming into each other as they're growing. So I'll show you this side really quickly. Just wow. So as you can see, she's super velvety, super bullet, just absolutely beautiful. This was because she knocked into another leaf as she was growing, which will keep happening unless I repot her and separate the two in there. Ooh, this looks like a better view. Ooh, can't get to it. But yeah, so I have to keep like adjusting the leaves. <laughs> and um, she's gorgeous though. But I'll definitely do a video where I show myself separating them. And that should be super interesting. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, messing stuff up. So over here is another hybrid anthurium that I have no idea what it is, but it's super cool looking. Like I love how it sinuses, like the whole, like the flaps here. It's retaining too much water, so I need to water it less as I water it. I definitely can't reduce the frequency of it because I have noticed it getting floppy when I don't water it if I skip a watering. So that's concerning. It's a really cool plant, but it's definitely giving me a, a bit of a diva vibe, except it doesn't even brown anywhere. So I can't really complain. Like she's really a sweetheart, except when it comes to the watering. <laughs> Over here is my, I mean, this is a trend, obviously another hybrid that I have no idea what it is. It's super cool. She's producing me this leaf right here. Honestly, I need to just get her out of this pot. She's in a net pot in this pot, but her petioles are too short for this. You should never ever have an anthurium resting on a pot like this because it's gonna end up damaging whatever part it's resting on because as they transpire, it just gets so wet and excess moisture on anthurium leaves is just never a good thing. So let me see if I can find some examples. Um, so as you can see right there, that's an example of it. She's leaning on the pot. So what I like to do sometimes is just put a piece of like moss <laughs> and fix that. But really she should be in a different pot or raised higher, or whatever have you. <laughs> and over here is my Radican's Luxuriance Hybrid. And it's super happy. It has two inflows. I know these inflows aren't going to do me any good when it comes to pollinating because it's a sterile plant. But <laughs> I love looking at them. I really, I don't have the heart to cut them off at the moment. Um, 
I know it's not great to keep them on because they take up so much energy that your new leaves will actually come out smaller if you don't end up cutting them off or it'll like inhibit new growth from actually forming. And I can show you actually a perfect example of this right here. Lux kept flowering. Like he's had like probably four inflorescences and these new small leaves are all because of that. They just took so much energy growing that his new growth just came out so much smaller. Like pretty disappointing, but <laughs> I haven't noticed the growth getting smaller on this one, so I've just been kind of leaving him be. I will probably, I know I have a video I'm going to be recording on this plant. As soon as I'm done that, I think I'll cut it off. You know what? I'll probably just cut it off. Just take a picture and cut them off. Picture lasts. <laughs> and a, another Anthurium hybrid that I have that I have no idea what it is. Ooh, God. She's a juicy one. That inflow is just big and that's crazy <laughs> but she's really pretty and I'm not sure what I want to hybridize her with if I I actually probably will just do it with herself because she's just I don't want to like I don't know I just want people more people to have this kind of plant I think she just looks pretty and Stormy the diva I ended up repotting Stormy and yeah she's been kind of a diva ever since which sucks, but you gotta repot when you gotta repot. She actually has an inflow right here, which I should collect the pollen on. And as you can see, she is beautiful. Like, she's absolutely gorgeous. But being a diva right now. My Anthurium regale, which desperately needs a repot, but I just haven't done it. Yeah, that kind of happened. <laughs> He's in like this very like condensed like soil. Like I've really compacted over time, which is unfortunate, but yeah, that definitely is something that needs to be fixed. But if you look in there, see like a healthy root. <laughs> and down here I have a Plowmanii and a Plowmanii hybrid. So I really love these kinds of philodendrons because I am really into the crawlers at the moment. I just think they're really pretty. And right next to them is a Gloriosum round form. So this one I got from Endesee Tropicals. Funny story about this one, when I opened it, it had a, a frog inside the pot and it was just devastating and I dropped the plant. But that scared me, so that was that. But he was also in the mail for two weeks, so I don't know how that frog lived, but kudos to him. So this Plowmanii, I had to cut him completely back as I did this pasta, but the pasta is still nerving me. Um, and this Plowmanii, he's really cute. Sorry, I'm kind of distracted because this stupid pasta right now has a bunch of pests on the back. You probably can't see it. Yeah, but I can. So I need to pause this because I'm getting angry at him. Okay, I apologize for that. I had to spray them down really quickly in this area. This is just plant life, guys. <laughs> so what I was going to say about this pasta is ever since I got him, he's had one pest issue after another. Like, he just came with pest. I chopped him completely back, and he's kind of still an issue. But yeah, it's one that I just sim can't seem to get rid of, and it's obviously not the pasta's fault, but, you know stuff and in case something got on my plow manii i sprayed him down too now he looks extra pretty but yeah with the plow manii i completely cut back too because he had spider mites and his leaves are really janky after shipping anyway so that's kind of what happened they kind of have a similar story they both had like i don't think it was spider mites that pasta had but his leaves got messed up after shipping too. <laughs> but just like, look how much he already grew back. And he threw a second shoot over here, which is really cool. So I absolutely love that. He's super pretty. And over here, my Plum Eye Hybrid, he's just kind of more triangular in his shape. So I found that to be really neat. I really, really love these guys. Like, uh, I have to show you my other one. I think this is a mammy actually, but it kind of follows in that range of crawler. <laughs> so that's why I'm kind of gonna go over him now. But he's really pretty. 
and he has these gorgeous red petioles and they're more ruffled and the ruffling makes me think plowmanii but he definitely looks more like a mammy so I have no idea <laughs> and over here is my bench of plants by the window I actually made this bench myself which was super cool but I don't know, I just felt very creative one day and I was like, I am going to buy some two by whatevers, sand them and stain them. And uh, yeah, so I got a bench out of it for my, my window. And my Florida ghost, I used to have my bedroom, but obviously not sufficient light. It used to only produce leaves like this. And as soon as I put it in an area that has more lights, it's gotten super happy. If you see anything crawling on it, don't freak out. It's just ants. It throws out extra floral, extra floral, well, I can't say it, extra floral nectaries like crazy. And I have a little bit of an ant issue by this window that I'm currently treating. So they love to just crawl all over this guy. But as you can see, they just come out astonishingly white. <laughs> and then they gradually get to like this kind of minty green color. Like they haven't even gotten full green. So my, I think they're probably just going to stay this color. But that just kind of goes to show you a Florida ghost given more light will just kind of remain a way lighter plant. It hasn't showed any issues by having so much weight on it. Honestly, it's completely fine. I think what's the oldest? We have this one here. Yeah, I've had, and it's been like this for months, so I don't know. But she's absolutely stunning. She definitely needs to be put on a pole. I think she kind of thinks she is on one because the leaves were smaller and then they started getting bigger. But again, that could also be the, the light. You know, light does encourage larger leaves. But she has started kind of edging on this pot, which makes her, I think, think that she's kind of climbing something. So I think that's one of the reasons why she's possibly getting bigger. But she's absolutely gorgeous. Like, I didn't even like her that much until I put her by this window. And then everything changed. <laughs> so kind of similar thing with this Philodendron Pariso Verde. So I recently gave him this kind of fiberglass pole. He's going to get a real one, but that is just for now. So he started out with these wonderful, very nicely variegated leaves, reverted a bit. I didn't really care because I still like to shape, but since putting him by the window, he's gradually starting to regain some of that variegation. So yeah, I didn't even care. He's a cool plant. I don't even mind it. And look how happy his aerial roots are. Like he did not have any of these until I put him on that fiberglass pole. Like that just really, really encouraged him. Over here is my Philodendron Pink, Pink Princess, which has grown so much. And she really loves this pole too. And like I did mention, the guys with this pole here, I never water. I am too lazy to water my moss poles, so... Yeah, <laughs> but I realized as long as they have support, they don't really need you to water it. The only time you really should go watering your moss poles is when you're really inviting them to root inside of them and root less inside the pot. And eventually what will happen is they'll be really dependent on that pole because their root system is in the pole. So that's not something I really wanted to invite quite yet. <laughs> so I decided to just use this method where they're still rooting themselves in the pot completely, but just have support that they're able to grow larger with. And she just produces these really dark colored leaves, which I love. Like I've never wanted a princess with like, like just green leaf, pink and leaves. Like this is what I wanted. And this is what she's been giving me. Honestly, I guess it's just the light I produce. I don't really know. <laughs> but she's been growing like that for a long time. And these are vigorous growers. Like, if you remember my video from, like, the Christmas tour, she was, like, down here. So, constantly growing. Um, see, if you have too much pink and not enough light, that's what happens. So, <laughs> yeah. Here's my Jose Buono. 
I actually have a bigger one of these now too, but I'm still really in love with this one. Like he's just really pretty and he's produced this leaf quite recently for me, which is really beautiful. I hope he keeps that white color. I'm really a fan of that. I, I love, love, love the lime green or the like kind of muted green color look, but it's nice to have white sometimes <laughs> in there. And over here is my Painted Lady. I went back and forth about these for a long time. Never a gigantic fan of them, but I don't know. I always kind of wanted to try it out. I did get one and what do I think about it? Um, I think it looks pretty. I know I'm, I'm like so enthusiastic. Now, it definitely looks really nice on camera. I don't think I look at this plant enough. Uh, the new leaves, they come in this kind of yellowish color. I think they turn like orangish and then they go to this. I prefer this color. I don't even, that just looks sick to me. I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's, this color is just, it's really pretty. But painted ladies, everyone. Yeah, definitely recommend. A case of somebody needs a pole is my philodendron adipapuensi. So a lot of my philodendrons in the beginning of summertime, I noticed uh, were very pot bound and that was not good for them. And they got a bit of stunted growth. So she could have been way larger than she is, but she's in a bigger pot now, needs an actual pole. That's my bad. Same thing with this one. I don't think this one has done anything, <laughs> but like get worse. Like this is my Adabapuensi Billetai hybrid and yeah. There's just not enough light in the spot. It looks like there is. There's not, I promise you. It's just, it's a very like shaded spot, very far away from the light. Um, the window doesn't give her much, just behind a fan, not a good spot. So I gotta remedy that for sure. Here's that same plant with more light, really much more vigorous than her. And right next to her is my Philodendron Splendid which is my Melanochrysum varicosum hybrid, which loves life. For a while, it had stunted growth, but I took a cutting off the top and it split into two plants. So as you can see, there's two growth points there. And it's been super lush and super happy ever since. Honestly, I adore this plant. It's super velvety, super beautiful. And I'm super proud of what it's become. It has a fiberclass pole in there, but it has outgrown it. So I'm definitely going to be repotting her with a pole as well. Probably a really tall pole. She's been growing super fast ever since I took that top cutting. So right here is my Philodendron Sodoroi, and it's completely facing the light, so you can't see it too well. When I got her, I had to actually cut her back. Um, a lot of people like to sell unestablished plants, so the root system was just not sufficient for the leaves she had, which was unfortunate. Um, right next to her is my Philodendron Rose Eucatophyllum. Beautiful, beautiful plant. And it's one I definitely want to bring down so I can see closer. But at the moment, she's going to be up there. <laughs> Over here is the plant that I severely need to put on a pole because he's just getting smaller and smaller. Also, I should probably increase his light in order to benefit that as well. Honestly, probably just increasing the light would help a lot. Um, this is my Philodendron White Knight. He's really beautiful, has gorgeous variegation. His leaves are just very small at the moment, but absolutely stunning plant would highly recommend this i love how it just reminds me of candy on the inside of the stems just really really beautiful then there here is my variegated burly marks and <laughs> if you remember this one from my previous houseplant tours he has never once grown you can see an ant crawling down there but yeah i just think he had a either a bud that was spent or what have you, but I don't think he's ever gonna grow. I think he's just gonna be one leaf. I thoroughly love him though. I don't even mind him staying one leaf, but really wish I could have gotten more out of him just because he's so pretty. Like, ugh. 
And over here we have two of my strap leaf anthuriums. I don't know what kind this is, but this is my palladiforium, palladiflorum, whatever. <laughs> Can't remember the name. So this one's certainly more velvety. It's super gorgeous. I need to put it somewhere where, even though I love this spot that it's in above my computer, it's really bad because the fan here, if you look over here, it severely messed up this leaf when it was coming in and this leaf a little bit here too. So I'm thinking maybe just putting them up there, but yeah, it's definitely not one that I don't think I can keep there or maybe I just have to turn my fan a bit more. I'm not sure, but love these two. Just look how big and beautiful, just gorgeous. Over here is my very beautiful Anthurium Red Velvet. And it's grown so, so much. I actually have a video of where it was growing. I think it was this leaf over here, like a time lapse that I haven't put out yet. And since, and since then it has grown so much. It has big, this big, beautiful dark leaf. And of course this one here, which is insane. Just incredible. It's interesting because this is a Regale Dresslery hybrid, and this one over here is the same thing, but it's the sister, which is Voodoo Child, and it just hasn't done as well for me. So it lost its previous leaves, here's its newest leaf, hoping for some new growth soon. I actually might move this into a greenhouse, but it's just not as happy out here as her sister plant is right there. I could say the so, same thing for this one, my Arisa Clamoides not feeling it. <laughs> so she's definitely going in a greenhouse too. These two plants here arrived completely rotted. I didn't think they would make it. There is the Anthurium Queen of Hearts and what's this? This one was a Chamberlainii hybrid. I can't think of it right at this moment, but yeah, I'm very lucky they grew a new leaf and I'm hoping for some new growth on them. It's definitely been a while. Over here, this beautiful little anthurium, not sure the name, but she's super, super gorgeous. And some fun ones that I wanted to show you are my red crystallinum. So the first one I have here, oh, actually I'll go over this one first. So this one I got from my friend Miles and it's absolutely gorgeous. I was trying so hard to get a crystallinum for so, this red crystallinum for NSC for so long, and it just wasn't happening for me. But, oh God, she's just absolutely gorgeous. And her leaves are just so pretty. Like, I love how you can still see the kind of pink hue and the veining here. That's like a telltale sign of the red crystallinum is they'll still always have that kind of pinky reddish texture to them. Just a very gorgeous plant. But as soon as, and I was on a restock list, so as soon as some seedlings were put up, I think it was just like a random restock, I ended up buying one as well because <laughs> I think I was just scarred for so long by not being able to get this plant. It was just always selling out. So I really wanted a second one. So I got this one and she is such a cutie. But I absolutely love this plant. Like, just look how pretty that is. But yeah. I love how it's just, you have so many different things going on with the leaves. It's just too cute. And here is my Regali Magnificum hybrid. I had a bigger plant and I ended up cutting it into a bunch of smaller stem pieces and propagating them because it just completely rotted. So got this one out of it and a few more seedlings in my greenhouse. Here's one of my original crystallinums. I think it's a crystallinum hybrid just cause it's like so strange in a shape. I think I've said that like so many times, but yeah. <laughs> and then this one over here, it was supposed to be a crystallinum magnificum, but I think it's just um, another crystal hope cause it's just so silver and so shimmery. And I see no Magnificum in there, so. <laughs> Over here is my Selby Silver. And I mean, she's cute. I'm not in love with this plant as much as I would have hoped to be. 
she's like, I don't know. Maybe if she grows, maybe when she grows bigger, maybe if I give her more light, I don't know. I just don't have a lot of feelings toward her at the moment. <laughs> and over here, gosh, I can't even think of the name. I know it's um, Anthurium X Bulletom or Bulletom X. And it had some root rot, which is why those leaves are messed up. But I rerooted it and put it into my soil mix. I love the cherry petioles. That's just a super cute feature on this plant. But I'm hoping for more growth on that one. I think um, there's a few plants in here that, the ones that aren't doing as well, that I'll just move to. I'm looking to get a larger, like, grow tent, so I think I'll move some of the ones that I'm selling into that, and the, like, greenhouses I have right now up here, I'll put some of my plants that I think I need a little bit more of a boost. Because the nice thing about greenhouses, the light is all around. The humidity is fantastic, like it's just optimal conditions. Like if we look here, like humidity is 63%, which is pretty like high because it's been a rainy day, but it's usually around 55. Normally the plants do really well, but like there's just certain anthuriums that could just benefit from a little bit of boost. Honestly, I could probably just increase watering, but I have a schedule that I like to stick to, so I'm more likely to just put her in a different spot <laughs> than do that. Here's another Clarinervium. This one, it had some issues, which is why it's, it's a lone leaf at the moment. Um, this one I'll probably end up selling because I don't need three Clarinervium. Um, even like the two, I'm gonna keep 100% because I love this one and this one's just bigger, so that's really cool and I love it too, but I don't certainly need a third. <laughs> And here is my Chamberlainii. So it grows in this kind of reddish maroon color and then it fades to like this greenish color. She's cute. I don't think she quite likes me, but she's cute. <laughs> and right here, my sweet guy, this is my Philodendron Golden Dragon. And so he has these beautiful, beautiful shaped leaves. Like you can definitely see like the dragon in him. Recently, he's produced some weird like janky leaves like this half leaf here and this half leaf here. I wanna say the new growth looks like it's gonna be normal, but for some reason he's just produced wonky leaves. But that's not completely abnormal because even before he produced this one, he's had leaves like back in the day that were like this. So he's just a really odd grower, like really weird and definitely hasn't been consistent with me so interesting love this guy though like this is definitely my favorite leaf like even if this was all green like i would absolutely just get it for the shape oh yeah and before i forget i have my maranta up here this is the silver blush he's been super happy with life so he's been growing very nicely for me really really beautiful plant and i've never been that great with like calathea maranta but i think because this was a gift from chris that i take extra pride in caring for it really well so that's just one of the things um this one needs a watering badly she doesn't seem to mind it over like this one doesn't seem to mind it as much as this one does or maybe i'm just i don't know what i'm doing differently i'm treating them the same but obviously she looks healthy as anything like, this right here is just dried up flowers. Like, she was flowering for me. Like, that's pretty awesome. But yeah, this one's kind of hating it. Hating life. <laughs> I keep, like, forgetting plants. I'm like, here's my Anthurium Pedituriatum Clarinervium Hybrid. So, this one's super happy. This is another plant that I had cut all the way back. It actually had some kind of, like, bacterial issue and so I just completely chopped it and it grew back. It's been like flowering like crazy. I can never get this plant to stop flowering. It's actually kind of annoying. I keep cutting off the inflows in order to support new leaf growth, but it just doesn't seem to care. <laughs> but she's completely, completely gorgeous. Love this one. And who did I forget about? Oh, I forgot about this queen right here. This is Helena. She's a big girl. Um, thing with her right now, she has this really messed up new leaf, which is unfortunate. So when she was growing out, she actually got stuck, like I think behind this leaf right here. 
And so her new growth got really messed up, which is really sad, but I know she'll have plenty more growth in the future. I love how I'm just like, oh, I think I'm done recording. And then I have this whole rack up here that I didn't do yet. So this is kind of my shelf of regulosum hybrids. The one that actually right here is just a regular Anthurium regulosum. And the rest of them are just hybrids with regulosum. Over here is my, wow, I'm blanking out on it, <laughs> is my regulosum or quianum hybrid. This one is by far the biggest one I own and she's absolutely stunning. She actually lost all her original leaves and this is actually her newest leaf. What I've noticed is they all love the light, like they're all striving for the scarlet right here. This one is my Calca Queen, which is a Forgetii Regulosum hybrid and I believe it's probably my favorite one. Um, <laughs> obviously I love them all and I really think this Dresslary Regulosum hybrid is gonna be gorgeous when it gets bigger. But right now, this one is definitely my favorite. It's just so pretty. And then, like I said, this is the Dress Larry hybrid. And she's growing a new leaf on the back. Over here is my Catch of a Queen. And she is definitely super, super velvety. And the Catch of is actually, <laughs> and I completely forgot to even say, is my Marmoratum hybrid gosh but she's super pretty too i also have the canal queen which is a pap papilaminum hybrid and that one is in my greenhouse right now and she definitely needs a bit of extra sh humidity she definitely struggled in this room but uh gosh they're just all so pretty <laughs> as you can tell i'm super into bullet leaves just absolutely love them this is just the shelf of bullet texture <laughs>